Warning, this tutorial doesn't contain the following information. How to download Minecraft. How to open dot Minecraft. How to install Forge slash Fabric. How to install mods. How to use text editor. How to read. How to use brain. Hello everyone, this is part 2 of the add on packing tutorial and in this tutorial we will learn how to make icons for abilities, how to make render layers, how to use attribute modifiers and a few other things. Let's begin. If you watched the previous parts of the tutorial you would probably have noticed that the icon we use for our uh, laser ability is a blade rod. But, but what if we want to use a custom icon? Uh, then we need uh, to remove that and here we need to put a path to our file. The texture should be located uh, at namespace uh, in the textures folder. Uh, so I have already, or already prepared a file in advance so let's add it as an icon. To do that, we first have to uh, type namespace. So in this case, it's pi, and then it's textures. And mine is inside another folder, so it's icons. But you don't have to put it in a folder, I did it because I can and and now we should add the file name so for me it's and we also need to add the file extension and now we can save our power and reload the world and as you can see our icon is working as intended And of course having abilities in the ability bar is pretty important, but also heroes can have abilities that modify their statistics. And those abilities are called attribute modifiers. You can look up names of attribute modifiers using the vanilla minecraft command called attribute. And this command gives you a list of all attributes that are in the game, modded or vanilla, and you can then use those in the attribute modifier ability. So, for the purpose of this tutorial, let's make our hero fly. To do that, we have to use an attribute modifier ability that has flight speed. Now let's see, can I fly? Yes, I can fly. And it has a really nice animation. So, yeah. You can also modify other attributes, like for example, max health or armor you have without actually wearing an armor. And now it's time for other things, render layers, which are also quite important. To make a render layer, you need a model and a texture. And to make a model, we need to use Blockbench, which is a program that allows us to make Minecraft models, but also we need to remember that render layers require a different format of model. So we need to use Palladium Entity Model and it's not something you will find in uh, like normal block bench. You need to get a plugin for it. And if you are from the future, uh, you, you will be able to just select the plugin from the 
Blockbench plugin menu. At least I hope. But if you are not from the future, then you would have to really go looking for it on the internet. I will also show how to use a GeckoLip animated model instead, because those also can be used and they can also be animated, but I won't show how to add animations to a model. This is a model template that I made, and it's just the player model without any additional cubes. As far as I remember, uh, all the cubes need to have those names, exactly those names. And you have to have all of those folders, but they can be empty and they don't need to contain any cubes or whatever. I don't know why this is here. Use this. But as long as those folders are here, nothing bad will happen to them. I mean, to your game and whatever. I also have two cubes here because one is the overlay and it's a bit bigger and the other one is just the normal texture. So if we would import a player skin uh, on this, then it would look kind of normal, you know. And this is a template for the uh, Gecko Lip model and it's really close to the Minecraft player. Like, you probably couldn't even tell in-game that the model of the player was replaced. And in this model, it's really, really important that all of those folders or bones or whatever you want to call them have the same name, otherwise you will crash. You can add other groups, bones, whatever, inside those folders, but those main folders, those main folders can only be those and nothing else. Here you can see the entire layout of the add-on we have created. So it has our power JSON, it has our icon, and also we have a few additional folders. So names, uh, assets, namespace, geo, it's, uh, is where gecko lip models should go. And if you are wondering where Palladium models should go, they should go into Palladium model layers. And render layers is, render layers is for render layer files. So we will create a model and place it in there and we will create a render layer and make it appear in this super power. Let's start doing that. So this is a palladium model and we want to add a cube to the player's arm. That's what I want to do for this tutorial. So first of all, we should delete all the useless cubes that we don't want to add anything to. So we want to add something to the arm. So let's add a cube and make sure it's in this folder. Now we have a cube. We can resize it and actually we want we don't want to replace the player's arm so those cubes can also be de deleted but what we do need is a texture also so let's now create a texture It won't be anything fancy, but I just don't want to use the default block bench texture for it. Now that we have our really ugly texture, we can save it.
And now that it's saved, and uh, our model is also saved, we can start by making a render layer. So, this is a render layer, which uh, most files you do in add-on packs have a .json extension, so do remember to always put it that way. So, here is a little bit of a strange thing about model layers, because it works a little bit differently than the normal paths you add to your models. So it's namespace, and then it's... I think that's the order. I might be wrong, I might, I might have to correct it. And it's written this way, because as you can see, my model is inside model layers, this folder, and then it's this file. And for the texture, it's like always with textures, it's namespace, textures, and it's inside the folder, so And that's our render, render layer done. So now we can add that to our superpower. So, okay, we have our superpower and now let's add another ability, which will be render layer. So it always, it always needs a unique name and type. The type is palladium. render layer because that's the that's the ability that allows you to use render layers and this is render layer and here you need to put namespace and the render layer that you are using so for me it's you don't add an extension to it and yeah, that's it. This will now work in game, so let's see how it looks. This is a little bit of a different process compared to superpowers because we are in the assets folder and the assets folder isn't reloaded with the reload command, but it's reloaded with F3 and T. So let's reload our resources, resource packs. And the render layer should be now loaded if I typed everything correctly. So now we also need to reload our superpower. And as you can see, I did most things correctly, but the texture isn't there. So let's see what I did wrong and I will try to fix it. Okay, you see the issue is just this. And now it's now it's all right. And now let's reload our textures again. And it works. So yeah, pretty cool. So uh, now I think it's also uh, I, now I think I also should talk about gecko lip render layer. So we have our gecko model and we will do actually something a little bit different this time we will copy our arm paste it and move it a bit and now we will save our model so now we have another another model layer i mean render layer and this time it has a type a type Gecko lip default and it has a model and a texture. And the interesting uh, thing will be with the texture, but the model also is a little bit different compared to the 
So this render layer, which uses something like that, this one uses something closer to what you type in a texture. So it's pi, which is our namespace. And it's then geo slash It's also important to save your Gecolip models as .geo.json, not, not just .json. And for our texture, we actually don't provide any texture from our files, but we add hashtag entity. And you will see what that, what that will do but let's add another rend render layer. That's really bad naming. Do not name your abilities like that. And we can also then rename this to layer two. So I think this will work now. It should this time. Yeah. When I tested it before, it didn't work because I didn't have Gecolip installed. Pretty funny. But yeah, as you can see, uh, putting hashtag entity inside the render layer will make it use the entity's texture. And this should also work on mobs, uh, on humanoid mobs. So let's summon a husk. Of course, peaceful. And let's give it a superpower. And it doesn't have any of the gecko leaf stuff. Of course. Why would it? Why would get leaf make sense in 1.20? Maybe zombies? That's worth a try. Nope. Strange. So, radium models will work on anything that's humanoid. And gecko models need separate models for every entity. Fun. So, I hope you learned something from this tutorial and if you liked you should leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike and i see you all in the next one goodbye